cycling around the country in homelessness. Um, a rather high users of the sector, you know, frequent presenters presenting several hundred times to emergency departments, to those who do not present at all and, um, and not receiving a service or on anyone's system at all. Um, and also people that are reasonably new to homelessness due to um, a range of issues that have, they've encountered recently. Um, as mentioned before, up to date we've um, worked successfully to house I think just over 700 people into long-term permanent housing. We've worked with a lot more than that, but their, um, um, that their, their support may have been different. They've you know, either moved on or they, um, the assistance provided wasn't around accommodation, maybe linking them up with other health services, etc. Last year, we, it was seen that we, um, the numbers of people who were counted to be sleeping rough in the inner city had been reduced by over 50 per cent, and that was um, achieved through having a, a twice yearly um, count in the, in the city over all the five years. Um, and more, more so than housing, as I mentioned before, many people have received significant improvements in their health um, in addressing chronic issues of chronic disease, mental health issues. Um, got connected with legal support and addressed those issues, have achieved support to deal with financial and debt matters, gambling issues, reconnected with family, um, been assisted around cultural matters um, and have um, realised vocational goals around training and education, etc. And many goals that don't fit those categories that the client has identified as their, their specific personal goals. And um, being around for over five years, we've been able to see that um, many people have been able to sustain those, um, those their housing and their health. Um, we do come into contact with, with people over time and because we're um, fairly well linked in with the broader sector, we, um, we hear stories about people down the track. Um, I want to just talk about some of the other things that are very, we, we found are important, I think, um, outside of the working with um, individuals. Um, it's around providing a um, team structure and a supportive team environment so workers can have the opportunity to fully utilise their expertise, not just become um, crisis managers or limit the role they can do, but have the capacity to work flexibly and creatively and in an individual manner with, with different, different people they're assisting so they can fully draw upon their own skills and that of their colleagues to um, think creatively in trying to address people's needs. Um, and to ensure that um, we, we develop and maintain a cohesive team where there's lots of opportunity for skill sharing across the disciplines and with people with other sorts of expertise and backgrounds can, can work closer with one another to, um, to assist and lead to really meaningful outcomes for people. Um, another aspect of what we do is we have a community development focus of our service where we um, see it's important to ensure that um, the mainstream and non-government services um, take responsibility around assisting people who are homeless and we, we try to achieve that through providing educational workshops. We will go out to different services and departments and community groups and talk about homelessness, talk about our service, how people can you know, use some of their own skills and abilities to assist someone when they may be in a better position to do it then, rather than referring them on to another service. So ensuring that there is a greater understanding out there and people can have draw upon some um, skills and tools to assist people. Um, as mentioned before, we, um, we work strongly on trying to address systems issues using um, when, when they're encountered around, you know, for example, difficulty in getting someone uh, mental health support or connected to that sector or into drug and alcohol service. And um, we do that through working on the ground and networking with those services, but we also take advantage of the, the support we get through the governance and the steering committees to feed information up to identify these things and make sure they're, they're um, addressed at a higher level, so to speak. Um, there's, there's also been some work done on service integration and some of the, um, some of the mainstream government services have identified what, what are called integration workers, like, for
for example, someone from the mental health sector that has been seconded out of their department to spend some time in the homeless sector and to help facilitate um, people getting better access into those services. Um, there's also work happening in the state around the reform of the non-government homeless sector where there's a, um, all the funding has been reviewed and, and allocated um, to ensure that services are better connected, that there's a reduction in the duplication of services, that there's a support to you know, share information appropriately to assist people to get better connection between services. Um, and that's also, and that, that's also included the, the stimulus housing funding, and that's been taken up in South Australia by a provision of houses, but also housing plus support. So there's been um, the money's gone into um, building properties, but also to funding workers that sit alongside that property. Um, and finally, I just wanted to recognise the, um, the, the value and the. Um, the importance of not underestimating the person and their capacity to enact you know, significant change in their lives once they have access to accommodation and support. We've, um, we've seen many people make huge steps um, that sometimes beyond our expectations around addressing their own personal needs and, and moving on with their own goals in life. And um, change couldn't be uh, occur without, without them. Um, Finally, I'm not sure how I'm going with time. All right. Okay. And just ongoing matters, I would also put my hand up for accommodation is just critical, and the lack of accommodation is both leading to people um, experiencing housing stress and falling into homelessness, but also people uh, maintaining homelessness while waiting for accommodation to come up. Um, and the most other important thing is we need political will to maintain this momentum. You need um, people in the corridors as such to be supportive and to drive this stuff and also to drive change across departments as it is the responsibility of all. And um, Aboriginal homelessness is a factor which really stands out as a really high need. We, many, we work with up to 25 to 30 per cent of our clients from the Aboriginal community and the issues of homelessness are, have high levels of complexity and issues around connection to land and community that um, are significant. The future, we're, we're excited around all the opportunities and changes that are going on nationally and within the state, and um, it's a privilege to be a part of that. And um, I'd be happy to participate or contribute in any way I can to, to that. Thank you very much.